Photoshop has a number of built-in non-destructive effects like the drop shadow, which can be applied to a variety of different kinds of layers. In this example, I have a photograph, but it's actually on a transparent background. And just to show that, I'm going to go under my preferences here to transparency and gamut. And if I toggle on the grid size to small, we can see that indeed the photograph is smaller than the entire canvas size. And this white area here isn't really white. It's actually transparent. But I will leave these off for now. So I'm going to click on cancel so that we see it as if it's against white. The first thing I want to do is I want to add a drop shadow to the photograph. So at the bottom of the layers panel, there's an effects icon. I'm going to select the drop shadow from the list. Now to make sure that we're all starting with the same settings, I'm going to click the reset to default. To change the drop shadow, I can use the opacity slider to make it more or less opaque. I can also change the distance. So right now it is so close to the edge that we're not even seeing it. So as I change the distance, we can watch as the drop shadow drops to the lower left. And in fact, it's at this 30 degree angle. If I want to change the angle as well as the distance, I can use the options here or I can simply click and drag in the image area in order to reposition the drop shadow. So I'm going to bring the distance a little bit closer, but then I'm going to increase the size of the drop shadow, and that's going to give me a nice soft drop shadow. I can also increase the opacity just to make sure that we can see it. And we now see the image as if it's separated off of the page and actually casting that shadow. There are additional layer effects that we can apply, and it might be a little confusing, but each one of these is its own effect, and then when you combine them, they become a layer style. So let's say I also wanted to add a stroke around the image. If I just click on the empty well to the left of stroke, that will apply the stroke, but it doesn't show me the options. I have to actually click where it says stroke in order to see the options on the right-hand side. So let's increase the size of the stroke, maybe to 10 pixels to make sure that we see it. And I'm going to position it on the inside because if I position it on the outside, I actually get rounded corners and I don't want that. So I'll change that back to inside. And the layer effects that have the plus icons next to them, that means that I can add more than one of that effect. So I'll click on the plus and this time I will change the size of the stroke up to 25 pixels. The thing is, is that both of the strokes are the same color, so this is just covering up the other one. So I'm going to reorder the strokes. I'll go to the bottom stroke, and then I'm going to move it to the top because this is actually the smaller stroke. And then I'll change the color here, and we can either select a color using the color picker, or I can position my cursor inside of the image, and I can select a color from the photograph. So we can see that I've got the light gray as the inside and the dark gray as the outside. But I actually think I want to reverse those. I want the black on the outside, so I'll select that and then return to the other stroke, double click on the color swatch, and now select a color from the image to give me that inside color. I think I'll just pick kind of a dark gray there. I also think it's a little bit too large, so let's bring that down to maybe 20 pixels instead. I just want to make sure that you can still see that. When I click OK, in order to apply these, we can see in the Layers panel that I have the layer effects made up of the two strokes as well as the drop shadow. If I ever want to hide these, I can toggle the visibility by clicking on the eye icon next to the effect. If I want to delete one of the effects, I can drag it down to the trash icon. If I want to delete all of the effects at once, I would drag the word effects. In this case, I just want to hide this other stroke. So we can still see the drop shadow. And if I ever needed to re-edit that, I could double click where it said drop shadow and then make my changes. I'd want to save this file as a layered Photoshop or TIFF file so that I could always come back and re-edit it at any time.